I've seen a lot of movies in my far too many years of life. Thankfully, most of them have been somewhere between watchable and enjoyable, at least memorable in some way. And of those that I've watched, many of them have been cult classics, pop culture type films, things that a lot of people know and can talk about. In this broad spectrum of all things pop culture, there is a small group of films, games, and music popular with stoners, and I haven't given that enough attention on this channel. So because today is a holiday, I thought I should watch the 1936 stoner classic Reefer Madness, since it does still seem to be such a staple in weed culture. But before we get into the film, I want to give some context as to why this was made in the first place, and why it's still so popular with stoners almost 90 years later. Reefer Madness is an American propaganda film from the late 30s. The film was funded by a church group for educational viewings shown to parents to warn them of the dangers of cannabis. In the 30s, scum of the earth Harry Anslinger became the head of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics and launched an all-out war against weed, a drug which wasn't actually popular or illegal at the time. With the Mexican Revolution ending just a few years prior, there were more and more Hispanic immigrants moving into the US around that time, something that terrified the American government almost as much as it does today. In response, Harry and the Bureau began spreading racist propaganda that weed caused bloodlust and psychotic attacks in its users, and that it was prevalent in communities of color because reefer makes darkies think they're as good as white men. In fact, the term marijuana, which is the English way of saying the Spanish word for cannabis, came from this propaganda, so that white Americans would associate the drug with Hispanics. Harry continued his tirade against the degenerate Hispanic and black races, his words not mine, for many years, and although even doctors at that time warned the public that the things being said about cannabis were not true, the propaganda won out in the end, and Reefer Madness, among several other films like it, were released to the American public, swaying public opinion and resulting in its criminalization. The movie was later found in a library in the 70s by a founder of a national welfare group dedicated to legalizing cannabis again, who then held viewings of the film for the price of $1 per ticket, and it ended up raising around $16,000 for the group. Since then, the film has been distributed internationally and has even received a colorized 4K remaster from the Library of Congress, as well as a 2005 musical remake of the film. I, however, decided to watch it in its original black and white format. And what did I think of it? I hated this movie. I knew it would be bad because of its inaccuracies and it being a cheaply made propaganda movie from the 30s, but with all the hype around how goofy it is watching it stoned and how it's a stoner classic, I thought it would at least be a funny bad movie. But this was almost unwatchable. I had to watch it in two parts because I fell asleep halfway through. I thought it would be like that one scene from Harold and Kumar for an hour, but instead I was just bored the entire time. The film follows Jack and May, two dealers and their pushers, Ralph and Blanche. Jack and Ralph start hanging out with some high school kids, and after one of them, Jimmy, asks for a cigarette, he gets handed a joint. Jimmy, who gets high but doesn't know he's high, drives away stoned and kills someone with his car. As time passes, Jimmy's friend Bill hangs out with Ralph and Jack Moore, and is beginning to flunk out of school because he's smoking too much weed. Bill cheats on his girlfriend Mary with Blanche, and when she shows up looking for him, is also offered some free weed under the guise of it being a cigarette. Ralph then tries to sexually assault her, and is subsequently attacked by a stoned Bill. A really weird choice they make is to make Bill hallucinate that Mary is the one initiating sex with Ralph, and that's why he decides to attack him, as if that would make the situation worse somehow. Anyway, Jack knocks him out with a gun, accidentally firing it and killing Mary. They frame Bill as the killer and he is sent to prison. Ralph and Blanche get high and have fun together until Jack, who has been ordered to kill Ralph, enters the room and gets beaten to death by him. They're all arrested, May confesses, Blanche kills herself, and Ralph gets sent to an insane asylum. The film ends with the principal of a school telling the audience that stories like these are common and bound to happen again. Then, in probably the most iconic moment of the film, he says, because it is only through knowledge that we can safely protect them. Failing this, the next tragedy may be that of your daughter, or your son, or yours, or yours, or yours. There's 
There's a lot of moments in this movie where nothing really happens. The characters just chat, and I actually hated the process of watching it. I get if you were really, really high, maybe parts of this would be funny, but if you were that stoned, I could not imagine actually staying awake throughout this thing. The movie is stupid because it exaggerates how much marijuana affects you, but I just didn't find it funny and I couldn't care less about the story. There's so many things that I didn't mention, like there was a whole subplot with like gangs and police and stuff, but it was nothing, it was nothing. I'm glad I watched it, just so I can say I watched it, but as soon as I post this video, I'm forgetting all about this. Even though the movie was absolutely garbage, I did quite like explaining the context and the purpose behind this piece of propaganda, so if there's an interest in this sort of thing, I might watch some other older propaganda movies and talk about what happens in them if anybody's curious. That's it for me for now, have a safe 420, and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.